Welcome to Caldwell County Today. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer for Caldwell County. Joining me today is Emily Gibbons, and she's going to talk to us about some books, and we're calling this episode Cold Hands, Warm Hearts. <laughs> yeah. So, Emily, I asked you to put together some winter reading for us. Sure. And this is what you came up with. It is. I Let's start with the cold hands part. Okay, so I decided on some books with some winter settings. It turns out mm -hmm. that a lot of those books are murder-type psychological thriller mysteries. Um, and then I decided to put together some books because January can get long and miserable. And I think all of us are feeling that lately. I put together some feel-goods. Okay. Um, so we're going to start with one of my favorite books that I read last year, which was Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. Um, it takes place in the Scottish Highlands. She is a scientist, naturalist, and she is trying to um, reintroduce a pack of wolves into this area. Um, she moves there. Her name's Auntie Flynn. She moves there with her twin sister, Aggie. Um, she's met with quite a bit of resistance to this wolf movement because these are, you know, they have cattle, sheep, mm -hmm. different kinds of herds, and they're worried that these wolves might murder Anyway, they're not happy with her. Well, the wolves thrive. Pretty quickly, the wolves just thrive, and she starts to settle in and get a little comfortable, and then a farmer's murdered. Uh, takes a turn. It does. So, had to be a wolf, right? Mm hmm But was it? You don't know. Anyway, it was atmospheric, cold, Scottish Highlands. Um, there's this whole, like, I don't know, it snows a lot. Um, so she spent a lot of the time cold and the wind blowing, um, and it's super fast paced, so you can really move through it pretty quickly. I listened to it, um, and I, I, I enjoyed it very much. And to remind our viewers from last time, you listen to books and you read books all at the same time. So yes. Emily usually has at least two books going, going yeah. at, at a time, so yeah. she's our um, super reader sleuth book person. <laughs> I, can, I can move at warp speed that way. Um, yeah, because I can listen to two or three a week, and then I'm, I, well, I usually only read one a week. So you do the math. It's a lot of books. That's a lot of books. Um, yeah, so anyway, that was one of my favorites. I really enjoyed it. I thought the wolves, it was interesting to learn about their pack demeanor and um, how they moved through the countryside and how she tracked them. That was all really interesting. Um, I actually felt like I learned something at the end of it, you know, it wasn't just a murder mystery. Um, we'll move on to Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Um, Alice Feeney has written several books that I've, I've enjoyed them all. Um, Sometimes I Lie and His and Hers, Sometimes I Lie was my first one. Um, she is very good at doing unreliable narrators um, where you want to trust them, but just don't. Just, <laughs> just don't trust them. Um, you know a twist is coming. And even when it does, you're like, whoa, mind blown. Um, anyway, so Amelia and Adam, they've hit a rocky patch in their marriage. They win a weekend away in Scotland and decide to use it as a last-ditch effort to save their marriage. These things never work. It never works. So anyway, they're going into a snowstorm to stay in a converted chapel in the middle of nowhere. Um, what could go wrong? A lot could go wrong. A lot could go wrong. Their power goes out. They see someone watching them. Their dog goes missing. I mean, it just keeps piling up on them. Um, it turns out that Rock, Paper, Scissors is the name of Adam's screenplay. He writes screenplays for a famous author, but he wants to get his own out there. And Rock, Paper, Scissors is one that he's written, and it's also a game he plays with his wife quite frequently, but he always lets her win. Um, and it, it's told in alternating points of view. You've got Adam telling his side. An interesting thing about Adam that I didn't, I didn't know this was a real thing, but he has face blindness. So like when he looks at you, he doesn't see your defining features. Everybody kind of looks the same. Um, and that plays into the plot line a bit. Um, just, so then you've got Amelia's side of why their marriage is falling apart, Adam's side, what's going on. Um, and then you've got it all coming together in this remote Scottish countryside. Um, cold, snow, again. Um, but it, it does all come together. And I, I even, I don't know, it, it takes slow burn. It was a slow burn. It took a bit for me to be like, oh, yeah, this is good. At first I was a little hesitant, but it, man, she can pull them out. 
So you, this was one you had to stick with a little I bit. I did stick with it, yeah. And so sometimes for me, I'm like, mm, no, can't do it. Yeah. But then again, if I do stick with books, they usually turn out to be really good. It's true. It's true. Some just start a little slower than others. Um, and this one did, as opposed to um, his and hers, which was about a private school, these private school friends and their people start turning up murdered. That one moved. Mm -hmm. But this one was just kind of, why is the marriage falling apart? And then you find out a little later and then the things are happening in the cottage and you're flashing back and forth. And about the time you think you were about to find something out, she'd flash to another time <laughs> or another person. So yeah, she, I mean, she does it really well though. So I, I enjoy Alice Meany. She's got another book coming out, um, I think. Nope, it might not be her. Anyway, I'll read everything she writes. Another high recommendation, and that's Alice Feeney. Yes, Alice Feeney. What's next? Um, the Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. So the tagline for this one is, all of them are friends, one of them is a killer. Wow. I know. And then when I was putting these together, I realized that clearly murder in Scotland is like some kind of, it speaks some kind of language to me because this is the third one set in Scotland. I don't know what it is about Scotland, but you like to read a lot of it. Is it Scotland or is it just that region? I, I like all the, I'll read anything that's like British, especially British chiclet. I love it. Um, Irish, Scottish, I don't know. And if I'm I'll listen to them, too, for the accents. It's fun. Um, they've got great accents. Okay, sorry. That's okay. The hunting party. Yeah, so this is a New Year's tradition for all of these friends from college to get together. One of them takes turns planning where they're going. And this year, the girl's name is Emma. She has planned what she hopes is going to be their best trip. They're going to this hunting lodge. And a blizzard cuts them off from the outside world. Then somebody ends up dead. Of course it does. But they, what, this one is another one where it goes back and forth in time. You're finding out about their time in schools. So all these ugly resentments start rearing their heads because they're not such great friends, are they? They're kind of frenemies. Um, it's multiple timelines, alternate points of view. There's a lot of characters in this book, a lot of people to keep straight. But the good thing is they start meaning their demise. So <laughs> as you go through the book, there's less. Um, it's very reminiscent of Murder on the Orient Express. So, um, I mean, Agatha retellings are always, those are always fun. And I, I put that this book does a great job of building anticipation. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same idea of not quite knowing what, she cuts out on you about the time you think you've got it figured out she goes to something else and then she comes back to it so it keeps you moving i like books that keep me moving yeah me too keep me moving forward yeah and that is by lucy foley yes right? and now she does have another book coming out and it's called the paris apartment i can't wait for that one it's going to be a lot of fun um she has another one called the guest list too which takes place on a remote island in ireland i want to say off the coast of ireland and it's cold and people start dying. She's got a she's got an outline clearly, but I will read I'll read what she writes. It's fun. Um, also, you'll freeze to death reading these books. I mean, they really do a good job of putting you into that atmosphere. Which right now is a really good time to read this. Yeah, books. I mean, oh yeah, it's cold. Um, so and and they are they're cold and it never fails. Somebody finds themselves outside barefoot. That just bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> okay, so now I just have an author, Ruth Ware. She, I just found out today, she has a book coming out in July. It's called The It Girl. She also is one that all of her books take place in cold weather type scenarios. It's usually a, not really a damsel in distress, but a woman who finds herself in a situation that she didn't anticipate. Um, the first book that really got Ruth Ware some recognition was The Woman in Cabin 10. Most people have heard of that. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a woman who takes a luxury cruise through Norway and witnesses a woman being thrown overboard. Um, yeah, that was, that was a good one. Um, one by One is a kind of another Agatha Christie retelling of And Then There Were None. So this it's a corporate retreat and they one, they get snowed in at a luxury ski resort in the French Alps and one by one they start yeah, so 
it's a kind of a whodunit. Um, in a dark, dark wood is a bachelorette party gone horribly wrong. And then in the Lion Game, four private school friends whose lies from their childhood come back to haunt them. Yep. A lot of interesting things. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I mean, you have that whodunit aspect. Again, just, you have to be ready for the murder, though. Yeah, there's all, yeah, all of these books have a murder. I would say, I mean, oh, maybe people, I, they're kind of psychological thrillers. They're kind of, there's some, um, there's been a real trend in domestic type thrillers. I find those to be really fun. Um, Jocelyn Jackson, she's a Southern author, writes some really good um, domestic fiction. And um, there's, there's been a real, these, I would say these are for anybody. Um, when I was working at the library, I did see a lot of, I mean, they, these cross mm -hmm. roles, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, 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 um, I mean, murder might be a trigger for some people. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I know some people who are like, oh, no, I can't read anything or Where somebody, anybody gets hurt or, you know, it's, it's animal cruelty gets a lot of people. Animal cruelty gets a lot of people. Um, but sometimes you want that book that is a mystery and you're trying, you really are trying to figure out who, who done it. Yeah. I mean, who, who committed the That's crime? Fine. And can you figure it out before the big reveal? Or mm -hmm. I, mean, I like to, you know, I'm going through my head going, I think it's this person. Oh, but it can't be that one. It must be this one. Trying to just, you know, get your brain working. And if I'm still thinking about it later, like a few of these, I was still thinking about after I finished them. I, that's usually the sign. I mean, I'm not reading them for their literary factor by any means. These are just fun. They're just fun reads. Sometimes I'll even go back and, and like, oh yeah, that was a clue and yeah. that was a clue. So I'm like, how did I miss that? How did you? I don't, yeah. These aren't, I, I mean, I'll say there might have been a little animal cruelty in a couple of them, um, but in the end, they all wrap up with nice pretty bows. So oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. You find out who did it and usually there's happy-ish endings, even if someone's dead. Um, this, yeah. Murder mysteries, they're fun. Okay, so this one kind of bridges the gap between the cold weather and the feel good. Um, this is called A, sec a Season for Second Chances. It's by Jenny Bayless. Um, this is about Annie. She finds her husband in a compromising position, not the first time, but it gives her the push she needs to leave him. Um, she finds a winter guardian position at a historical home in a seaside town. This is on like the British coast. They she's she, it's winter she's going to freeze to death um she's going to be caring for a home as the elderly owner goes to live in the city to winter i think that's lovely to winter i think that is um anyway much to the chagrin of the owner's nephew annie starts to create a little life in that town she makes friends she opens a coffee shop um she finds she finds a place for herself a new purpose and but he wants to sell he wants to sell that little historic house and build condos yeah, he's kind of the bad guy for a little bit. Um, but I really thought that this was where the feel good comes in is that she finds her purpose. Um, after she's she's middle-aged, she has served what is the socially acceptable life of being a mother and a wife and a, and she, she finally finds the confidence to live for herself. Um, I thought that was brave and I enjoyed her unwillingness to compromise what her new expectations were and how she wanted to be treated. Um, it all comes together really good. I will say that this one's a little saucy. Okay. People might need to know. Um, yeah, but I, I did. I really liked it. And I hope, I hope you never find yourself in this type of situation, but it was really nice to read. It is really nice to read. And I think even though we may not go through something as dramatic as divorce that you know we all grow yeah. and we change sure and that that's part of living so seeing someone come and open their own coffee shop especially when they're a little bit older yeah yeah have this important. kind of new door opening kind of thing she just had to be brave enough to walk through it um and she was and it i i was I, it was a really feel it was a feel good read even though i mean yeah, they have bonfires on the beach, and it's, it's like cold at Halloween, you know. 
Yeah, I'm not too much of a cold weather girl. So I want to say she moved into this cold cottage in like September. Like, yeah, to winter. I'm thinking winter is really long there. Yes, I would think it's really long, really cold. And if you've ever been on the coast during winter, you know that wind blowing, which you enjoy in the summertime. Sure. It's not so great in the wintertime. No, it cuts through you. Um, we went to we went on a trip to Cape Cod, and I've read multiple books about Cape Cod settings. I was so excited to be there. What they don't tell you is that it's cold in June. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it not, is cold in June. It's that, cold in June. That beach breeze it was not so breezy. We not wore what puffers. We're used to. Yeah. Not what we southern people are used to. Nope. No. So yeah, we wore puffer jackets and hats, and I, it was cold. Um, so now we're not cold anymore. We're going to get some warm fuzzies. Warm heart. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, this is about Nora. Um, she's having the worst day of her life. She lost her job. Her cat died. Um, her life is completely ordinary. She's having relationship troubles with her family. And she decides, um, in her despair, to overdose in an effort to die by suicide. Um, the only thing is, she doesn't die. She kind of goes to this in-between place. And this in-between place was is the library, her childhood, her elementary school library, with the librarian there, who had a very profound place in her mm -hmm. life as a little girl. Um, so this librarian who showed Nora so much kindness tells her that all the books on the shelves are all the possibilities, all the different ways her life could have gone had she made different choices. And she gives Nora the um, option to kind of try these lives on. So Nora starts picking out her life. She wants a life where her cat lives. She wants a life where she marry, where she marries the person she should have. She wants a life where she's, oh, she used to swim. So, and she was quite good at it. So she wants the life where she was an Olympic swimmer. Um, and she tries all of these lives on for size. And it's this idea that if you'd made different choices, the direction you could have gone. She's kind of living this life currently full of regret. Um, but she, what she finds is that really the life she's living is the life for her. I mean, it takes a while to get there and you know that's where it's going. I am not spoiling anything. <laughs> um, it is a novel of regrets, forgiveness, and hope. Mostly she had to forgive herself um, for her, the mistakes she's made in her life and you pick up and move on. Um, this book had a lot of hype about it when it came out, and I didn't buy into it. I was like, whatever. And then I picked it up and read it just like, I think last month. And I was like, oh, I get it. I know why people love it so much. Um, I'm not much of one to be a what if -er, but a lot of people are. And they think about where they could have been had they made this choice or that choice or, or whatever. Um, and I think it, I thought it was nice to know that really the best place she could be is where she was. I think we learn as we get older that some of the choices we made, what we thought was a failure at the time, really was the thing that strengthened us to get us where, where we, we are. are now. Yeah. And without that, we wouldn't have the strength. So, yeah, it, this was a nice story. I, it gave me all the feels. The one thing that she, like, a lot of it, she found out these things that had happened to her would have happened anyway, in one way or another. Um, it just would have been with, in a different setting. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, I really enjoyed it. Um, there is a little bit of romance here and there. Um, there's friendship. Um, there's, she kind of finds a purpose, what she's meant to do with her life. Um, yeah, good, feel good, feel good book. Feel good book and one that could be really reflective. Yeah, sure, yeah, you can definitely apply it to your own life, I think. Um, and I like those. I don't read a lot of like self-help or anything like that, but if I get a life lesson out of a book, that's nice. Um, now this one is a really laugh out loud, funny kind of book. Um, it's Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I, I have to say it's one of my favorite books I think I've ever read. Um, I laughed so hard at this crazy storyline. So Madison and Lillian, Lillian are unlikely friends and they meet at an elite private school. Um, Madison is wealthy, Lillian is there on a scholarship. Um, they play basketball. So there's a scandal 
and Lillian has to leave rather unexpectedly, much to hurt their disappointment. Um, but years later, Lillian is living at home, living a dead in life, she thinks. Um, and Madison is married to a Tennessee senator and is the stepmom to twins. She has her own son, but these twins are a little problematic in that they burst into flame. Very problematic. Yeah, so like, yeah, when their emotions get a little riled up or things don't go the way they want, fire. They're little fire babies. Um, so Madison's desperate for help, and she asks Lillian to come be their nanny. Lillian's never been around kids, but she's like, what the heck? I got nothing better to do. Let's go take care of these kids. Um, the kids are sweet. They're endearing. They're rather misunderstood. They've been living with the mom's family, um, and the grandparents have just kind of kept them in a pool. Like, they spend <laughs> all their days <laughs> eating ice cream and hanging out in the pool because they catch on fire. Um, and that way, too, like, all their clothes don't burn off. It's really funny. I mean, it is really funny. I mean, funny. even that concept. Yeah. I, I live in a swimming pool. Yeah, they pretty much just stay in the pool all summer. So, um, yeah, it, it's so funny. I just keep thinking about these kids wearing their emotions on their sleeves like that. And, like, what if we did? What if I just caught on fire every time I got a little too anxious? Or I'd be on fire right now. <laughs> I mean, well, I think how... If my mouth doesn't say it, my face does. Yeah, I mean, too. people know, like, if I'm happy, if I'm sad, it's, it, it's there. Or, I mean, even if I'm sitting in a commissioner's meeting and I'm like, ooh, that's not really going the way I thought it would. I mean, you, you can see it on my face. That's why I sit where our viewers can't see me. Right. Um, so, yeah, I would just be bursting into flames. All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. So, um, it turns out Lillian really comes to care about these kids. Um, they have built this incredible guest house for Lillian to live in where like there's water sprinklers and there's a pool and there's a freezer and like there's all, it's, it's kept at a certain temperature. Like they have really gone to all the extremes to keep these kids comfortable. Um, but Lillian finds that she has, she is, she's in it. Like she really cares about these kids. Um, she's really upset with the Senator for not given them a little more attention. And there's a really memorable dinner party where she argues that Dolly Parton has made more contributions to Tennessee than the Senator has. Wow. <laughs> I know, so it's really funny. But, she might not be wrong. But she's probably onto something. Yeah, she might be Dolly. What would Dolly do? Um, it really is laugh out loud funny. Um, I would like to say, be warned, there is language. Someone counted this particular word, and the, the book is short. It's like less than 300 pages, and there's like a word a page. So if that's offensive to you, maybe don't. This is not the book for you. Not the book for you, but if you can look past that to see you know, the heart of the story, it's, it's really good, really funny, really good. Um, I recommend it. I'd love to see it as a movie. I think it would be so fun. It sounds like it would be fun. Yeah, some combustible kids. Which reminds me of the movie The Incredibles where the baby yes. burst into flames. Yeah, yeah. That's my visual on that one. Yeah, yeah. These are like, what, what are their names? Bessie is the little girl, Roland, Bessie and Roland. Um, and they're, I want to say they're like, you know, older, not older, but like 9, 10. Oh, so we're not talking about babies no. bursting into flames. We're no. talking about kids with minds of their own. Mm. Yeah, they would be on fire all the time. All the time, yeah. It's so good. And nothing to see here comes from, like, she'd take them out in public. We're going to go to the library. We're going to research Dolly Parton. And they do. And then a kid can bust, and she's, she's just like, nothing to see here. Moving along. Let's keep going. <laughs> and so that's where nothing to see here comes from. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, it, it's probably the funniest one of all of the books I've chosen. It's, not, it's just so good. Um, next, we're going to talk about The Chicken Sisters by K.J. Del Antonia. Um, this was a Reese Witherspoon choice. Actually, a couple of the ones I've chosen were, but this one was, it's kind of, it's a, a little bit different than the others. It's a, I wouldn't call it chiclet necessarily. Maybe like family, I don't know, nobody dies. Um, it is about two fried chicken restaurants in a small town. It's kind of Romeo and Juliet-ish where there's like a, the family's, the family's feuding. Of chicken restaurants. Yeah. I can see where that could go. It's very a, serious. Yeah, a small town in Kansas. They're two very different restaurants. One just does like fried chicken, two sides done. And the other one has, you know, like other options, salads and things. So they're a little upper. They consider themselves to be a little more upper class in the fried chicken. So what happens is Amanda sends a letter to Food Wars, which, you know, like, mm -hmm. like HGTV or something, um, Food Network. Um, 
about the fried chicken restaurants in her small town. She's trying to save hers. Um, and the $100,000 would change her life and change their restaurant. Um, her fancy sister, May, is an organizational guru with her own show, but her career implodes, and she finds herself thinking that appearing on Food Wars might be the only way to save her career. Um, puts these two sisters at odds because, well, what happened? The one sister married, you know, into the other family, mm -hmm. the, the feuding families. Um, so you've got these two restaurants. They have roots with the mm -hmm. same, like, you know, they're built from the same heritage, I guess. They probably share a fried chicken recipe, if I'm guessing. We're very close. I will never tell. Okay. I'm but just guessing. I will say, it's family secrets that come to light. Man, Paige. You just threw me off. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm just like sitting here imagining how no I would write here. it. How I would write it. So, and the two sisters, they have to decide if they're going to fight with each other or if they're going to fight to save these restaurants. I mean, it's kind of, I grew up in Burke County where fish camps were a big deal. Mm -hmm. We had Curly's Fish Camp and we had Texas Fish Camp and you liked one or the other. We always went to Curly's, but my best friend's family owned Texas. Um, I found myself eating at Texas in later years. But still, you know, it was a feud. Which one do you like the best? Um, and this book really plays into that. It's a, a lot of fun. But there's some families, there's some other family secrets. There's some serious themes hiding in there. Their mom is kind of a hoarder. Um, there's grief. There's, I mean, there's some pretty serious outside themes playing into this. But in the end, it's happy and feel good. Um, for the most part, funny and lighthearted. Um, and I, I love books that talk about food and fried chicken. I mean, it doesn't get much better. I mean, how can you go wrong with fried chicken? Yeah, I, I didn't realize that, I mean, it takes place in Kansas. I guess I didn't think about Kansas being a big fried chicken place. Well, I think of Kansas as a Barbecue, farm state. Barbecue, that too, yeah. So I, I imagine Kansas makes some pretty good fried chicken. I know we could check with Sarah at our 4-H. We could. Yes, yeah. she's from she's Kansas. From Kansas. She um, would let us know real well, quick. That's one of the things that plays into the book, too. The one sister is like, your chicken's frozen, and <gasps> my chicken's fresh. <laughs> so I think mean, that Jake, yeah, it's serious business, this fried chicken restaurant stuff. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really did. Did you eat more fried chicken while you were reading that book? When I finished that book, we did make a trip to my favorite fried chicken joint. I won't disclose. Okay. As to not, I like fried chicken a lot. But I do have a favorite. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, everybody Most people do. KFC or Bojangles. You, you're one or the other. You're not and both. And now we, I hear rumors we're getting a Popeye's coming into town. So how's that going to play into the fried chicken wars? And we also have what? Who's that? Well, well so there's Zaxby's and Chick-fil-A. And they've all got right. these rival sandwiches. And I have to say, I think they're all very different restaurants. And I think some do some things better than others. That Popeye's sandwich is where it's at. I'm looking forward to that. Well, my husband is very much looking forward to Popeye's coming to town. Yeah. I'm just yep. I'm just going to go ahead and warn you that he will be the first in line, folks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, that is one of those places we only eat when we're we only eat there when we're on interstate. Like it's one of our traveling restaurants, so I, it might be dangerous to be in town. I'm afraid it's going to be dangerous for my spouse. But anyway, let's get back yeah. to the book. Fried chicken, fried chicken. Okay, so I've got some books that were worth mentioning. Um, that are cold, feel good. One is definitely not a feel good, so sorry. Um, the Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. Um, so I can't remember where it takes place, but it's somewhere really, really cold in an old asylum. Um, and they've turned it into a luxury hotel. And that seems completely contradictory to me. Well, yeah. So somebody dies. And she has to figure out who it was, the girl. I can't remember her name. But there's a second one coming out called The Retreat, so it follows her story. She is she was a police detective um, who was just something had happened, and she was struggling with her position, and so she used going to this hotel opening as a, like a, you know, she's going to go hang out there, and then she ends up having to do her job that she was trying to get away from. So no R&R. &R, no. Nope. Back to work. Yeah, back to work. She found herself having to work. So then I thought I'd mention Anna Karenina. Um, classic. Classic, cold, Russia, not a happy book, but a very good book. I, that's one of the books that when I finished it, I was like, I am so glad I read this book. Um, I made my daughter watch the movie with me and she got so mad at me. 
<laughs> so, she was like, why didn't you warn me? So definitely Anna Karenina is not a happy book. But it's lovely. I mean, still, it's lovely. Where'd You Go Bernadette by Maria Simple. Um, an architect that, oh, she's kind of a, she's an agoraphobic, has been architect, living in this big old house that's kind of crumbling around them. Um, she tells her daughter, yeah, we'll go on this trip to the Antarctic if you can make straight A's on your report card. Yeah, and then before it happens, she just up and disappears. They don't know where Bernadette went. <laughs> so you're, you're figuring out where Bernadette went through letters and emails and correspondence and different things. Um, this was made into a movie with Kate Blanchett. She's Bernadette. It was very good, very well done compared to the book. Um, so good. Anyway, Beth Leary, Beth O'Leary. Just another author recommendation for Feel Good. The Flat Share, The Switch, The Road Trip. The Flat Share is about a girl um, who is looking for someone to live in her home. Like, at they, she wants them to have alternate job shifts. So they have this whole relationship. So you're like, he lives there at night and she lives there during the day. And they communicate through like notes on the refrigerator and kind of things like that. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Um, the Switch was about um, a young, a, a granddaughter and grandmother relationship. They switch places in their lives. The grandmother goes to live in London while the granddaughter goes to live in the country. And it's just, it's, it was really great. I mean, you know, they find out things. They had made these assumptions about each other's lives. And that's mm -hmm. so fun. Yeah, it was, it was so fun. The grandma was a real hoot. Um, she's quite sassy. So then I thought I'd talk about what I'm currently reading. Um, I'm about to finish The Maid by Nita Prose. That one's, I've heard a lot about it lately. It's about a socially awkward maid um, that finds herself caught up in a scandal. She works in a high-end New York hotel um, and the scandal involves drug and murder. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. I've enjoyed it so far. Um, but I really am about to finish it. I can't wait to see how it turns out. And then I'm reading The Secret of Snow by Viola Shipman. Um, it's about Sunny Dunes, a middle-aged meteorologist that has a breakdown on live TV after being replaced by, like, a virtual assistant. Ooh. Yeah. That's a twist. Yeah. So, And she's in Palm Springs, California, and then she gets a job offer from a frenemy from college, and she has to go home to Michigan. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that one's been kind of funny so far. I've enjoyed it. She's like gone sledding down a hill in snowshoe and they're trying to bring up their ratings and they think she, her, you know, this is going to do it for them. Um, it's pretty funny. So then my TBR pal, it's big, but the ones that really stand out to me is the new Lucy Foley, the Paris apartment. Um, it's a locked room mystery set in a Paris apartment building in which every resident has something to hide. I'm all about that. And then I'm going to read Dune by Frank Herbert, 1965, mm -hmm. sci-fi. Um, I watched the new movie, and I got sucked in, I have to admit. I think we may have Eric talk to you about that. <laughs> Let me read it first. We'll see. I'm like, I put it on hold on the digital library, and I'm like, 450. So it might be next year. Well, next year, <laughs> yeah. that, that is definitely a conversation for you to have with Eric. I, I read a lot. I read some sci-fi, so I'm looking forward to it. But I've never read Frank Herbert, and he isn't he like a... I think he's pretty high up, up on the, yeah. the, the sci-fi list. I, I'm not a sci-fi person. I, I'm a sci-fi by default because have you met Eric and Keegan? It's true. It's true, yeah. So, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm going to give it a go. And then Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I have high hopes for this book. This is what it says. When Finley is overheard discussing the plot of her new suspense novel with her agent over lunch, she's mistaken for a contract killer and inadvertently accepts an offer to dispose of a problem husband in order to make ends meet. That sounds awesome. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. And the cover is pink and fun, and um, I just and I, it's going to be a series, so I'm really looking forward to it. I, I'm. I hope I get that one soon. Okay, if you're reading a series, uh -huh. how do you handle it? Do you want all the books to be finished, or do you like read one and wait? I've done both. So when I read The Hunger Games, mm -hmm. I managed to get. All of those books in my hands to take on vacation and oh, that was so fun I couldn't put them down um, when I read Harry Potter I only had to wait on the last book when I read Twilight I had to wait on every book that's miserable 
Um, and there are other series. Not that those young adult series are the only ones in the world, but like if you're waiting on a new Stephanie Ivanovich book, I've gotten to the place where I feel like if I've read one, I've read them all. Um, so mm -hmm. I quit her, but I can do both ways. If they're all out, that's great. Because I like to get them all and just like... What if I forget? Yeah, what if I forget the character? and yeah. Or a minor character becomes a major character and like I forgot what happened here. And But good authors, you know, they throw that old information mm -hmm. at you to catch you back up. Um, and hopefully someone else who's read it and I can have a discussion with them will remind me, oh yeah, that happened. That's, that's happened quite a bit. I mean, when I, I hang out with readers too, so... Yeah, I am. I'm looking forward to this Finley Donovan. Um, it's not on here, but if if you're a mom with kids, there's a series by Lori Gelman. I don't. Do you know? Okay, that Michael Gelman that does the. He's uh, the producer for Regis and Kel, Kit, all those uh, shows. Yes. Live. La. Yes. It's his wife, and she wrote a series of books. I want to say. I don't even, you've been volunteered, might be the first one. Um, but it is about a mom who is her, the, she's the class mom. And she sends out these hilarious emails. They are laugh out loud funny. There's three of them. I enjoyed all of them. Um, yeah, pick those up. Um, I think you could find any of these at our local library or through the digital services like I did. Um, I didn't buy any of these books. Talk to me a little bit about your digital service that you use. I use, through the, our library, I use the North Carolina Digital Library, which is a consortium of multiple libraries across the state um, that kind of pulls their resources. Um, you, for those items, you put those books on hold and wait for them just like you would a physical book. Um, and then our library offers Hoopla, which is five checkouts a month. Um, they offer ebooks, audiobooks, movies, CDs. Um, there's graphic novels, you name it, it's out there. Just remember, if you check out a TV show and then you want to watch the next one, that's one of your checkouts. Um, so, yeah, I, I rarely use my five checkouts. Honestly, I get pretty close. I've, I've gotten pretty close. But between the digital library and Hoopla, I'm able to stay pretty busy. Do you need a library card? Yes, you do. You need a library card. So easy to obtain. Just Go by your local library. Yeah, you just need ID, proof of residence here in Caldwell County, or if you work in the county. Um, we have a reciprocal program. If you live in another county, you can come get a library card. Um, I would encourage everybody to get a library card. It will open your world. Because you're not buying most of these books. No, I don't buy any of them. I, I used to buy books, and I, there's not a need for it anymore. I can spend my money on something else. Well, there's plenty of things to spend your money on. Yeah. And yeah. we won't go down that rabbit trail today, no. <laughs> but maybe another day. Emily, I hope you'll come back at Valentine's Day and of join us course. for some maybe romantic books, I've, romance books. I've read plenty of those. So yeah. we hope Emily, you'll be back to join us. Thank you for being here today, Emily. And thank you for watching Caldwell County Today.